Hey guys, in this video, I am going to talk about a small 7B image generation model called Ovis Image from Alibaba. The creators of this model say that it excels at text rendering. Is this model better than Z Image Turbo when it comes to text rendering? Let's see in this video. First, let's see where you can download this model and the files that are needed for running it. The download links I am using in this video are available in the description. So first, let's take a look at the download page of Ovis Image. In here, let's click on Files and Versions. Then, click and open the folder called Split Files. Here we have two folders. One is Diffusion Models and the other is Text Encoders. First, let's open Diffusion Models. So, here we can find the Ovis Image model, which is in the BF16 format. Use the download button to get the model. If you cannot run this model, there are quantized models available in GGUF format, which I will show you later. Now, let's go back to the parent folder called Split Files. Then, open the Text Encoders folder. Here we can find the text encoder named Ovis 2.5. Use the download button to get the file. Later, I will show you some GGUF models of this text encoder. Now, let's focus on the GGUF models of Ovis image. Let's click on Files and Versions. Here, we can find various quantized models of Ovis image. You can try various GGUF models to see which works best for you. So, use the download button to get the GGUF models. Also, there is another user called Converter who has uploaded some GGUF models of Ovis image. In here, let's click on Files and Versions. Here, we can find some GGUF models of Ovis image. Also, some quantized models of text encoders are available in here, which have names starting with QN3VL2B. So, you can try this text encoder, but don't expect good quality from it. And also, there is a VAE available in GGUF format. It is the same VAE used for Flux1 models. The VAE is also available in Safe Tensors format. It is possible if you are using Flux1 models, you may already have this VAE. If you don't, download it. After downloading the files, let's see where we need to put them. Let's open the Comfy UI Models folder. So, in here, let's open the Diffusion Models folder. This is where we need to put the Ovis Image model, which comes in both safe tensors and GGUF formats. Next, regarding the text encoders, let's go back to the parent folder. Let's open the text encoders folder. This is where we need to put the text encoders used for Ovis image. Both safe tensors and GGUF files should be placed in here. Then, for the VAE, let's go back to the main folder. So, in here, let's open the VAE folder. This is where we put the VAE. Both the safe tensors and GGUF formats of the VAE should be placed in here. After that, if your comfy UI is already running, refresh it using R on the keyboard. In my case, I don't need to do that. So now let's take a look at the workflow. Comfy UI already provides a workflow for using Ovis image. You can find that workflow in the templates tab. In here, search for Ovis and you can find the workflow. I already have a modified workflow for using Ovis image, so let's focus on that one. The bottom part of this workflow is for running Ovis image and the top part is made for Z image turbo. I made these modifications so I can show you a comparison between Ovis Image and ZImage Turbo. In the middle of this workflow, I have added this string multiline node and connected the node output to the positive prompt of both models. This way, Ovis Image and ZImage Turbo will get the same prompt. Now, I will give you an overview of the Ovis Image part of the workflow. So, in the Load Diffusion Model node, we have selected Ovis Image BF16. If you want to use the FP8 model, then you can choose it here. Also, the download link for the FP8 model is available in the description. Then, in Load Clip, I have selected the text encoder called Ovis 2.5, and the type is Ovis. In the Load VAE node, I have selected AE.SAFATensors. Then we have the empty SD3 latent image node. Here, we can set the resolution of the output image. Currently, mine is a square resolution of 1024 for width and height. For the positive prompt, I cannot type anything in here, as I said before. It is managed by another node. Also, Ovis image supports a negative prompt, but I kept it empty. This is because when I used the default keywords that came with the workflow, they were affecting the alignment of text rendering in some output images. So, I moved the default keywords to another node, 
so if I want them later, I can use them. Then, for model sampling aura flow, I chose a shift value of 4.0. Next, in the K sampler, I am using 50 steps. For the CFG value, I am using 4.0, although the creators of Ovis Image recommend a CFG value of 5.0. However, in most generations I ran, 4.0 was perfect. The sampler I am using is Res Multistep, and the scheduler is simple. So, this workflow is very easy to understand. I assume you already understand the top part of this workflow, so let's focus on the current generation I ran. In here, you can see that Ovis Image performed better than Z Image Turbo. Z Image Turbo had some issues with the text. Also, in terms of the bottle and the splashes around the bottle, Ovis Image looks better. For Z Image Turbo, it is not that bad, but not as impressive as Ovis Image. So, in my opinion, Ovis Image is suitable for an ad campaign. So, let's try another prompt. Let's copy this prompt for a washing machine ad, and let's paste it inside the positive prompt. Now, let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is completed. Now let's take a look at the result. So this time, I think both models did a good job. But one problem with Ovis Image is that it duplicated a text phrase. As you can see here, Smart Drum Technology appears two times in the Ovis Image output. So what are the mistakes you see in this image? Let me know in the comment section. Now let's try another prompt. So here I have a simple logo design prompt. Let's copy that prompt and paste it inside the positive prompt. Now, let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is completed. Now let's take a look at the result. Well, in this generation, the Z Image Turbo image looks better than the Ovis image output. The rusted text and the surrounding grass look more realistic. Meanwhile, the Ovis image output looks more like a 3D render. So, from my viewpoint, Z Image Turbo is the clear winner in this generation. But I do like the result of Ovis Image. Now, let's try another prompt. Let's copy this prompt of a headphone and paste the text into the positive prompt. Now, let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is completed. Now let's compare the results. Well, in this generation, the Ovis Image output looks better, but there are two mistakes. One is that the phrase, pure sound zero noise, got duplicated, and the word zero has an extra E in it. Regarding Z Image Turbo, the headphone looks good, but the main heading has problems. Pure sound, zero noise is perfect in Z Image Turbo. However, when comparing the text alignment of both images, Ovis Image looks better. Now let's try another prompt. Let's copy this prompt for a shoes ad and paste it inside the positive prompt. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. The generation is completed. Now let's compare the results. Like before, this time too, Ovis Image looks better than Z Image Turbo. My findings here are that while both models rendered the text perfectly, the Z Image Turbo image is a simpler, studio-like shot. The Ovis Image output, however, has a much more professional and dynamic look. It's placed on a concrete ledge against a clear sky, giving it that high-end athletic ad feel. The Z Image Turbo text alignment does not look good in comparison. It looks like some novice created the ad. Ovis Image, meanwhile, looks much more professional and ready for a campaign. Now let's try another prompt. Let's copy this prompt for a keyboard ad and paste it inside the positive prompt. Now let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is completed. Now let's take a look at the result. Well, in my opinion, the Ovis image output looks better. Meanwhile, the Z Image Turbo failed to render a proper keyboard. The text on the Z Image Turbo keys is mostly garbled and nonsensical, making the product look unusable. While the labels on the Ovis Image keycaps also failed to render accurately, the overall design and rendering of the physical buttons and the keyboard itself look much better. So, for me, I prefer the Ovis Image result. It looks more professional. So guys, what do you think about the Ovis image? Please let me know in the comment section. And also guys, I've made a GGUF workflow that you can get from the description. In this workflow, I am using the GGUF nodes that come from the GGUF custom node pack made by Calquiz. Let me give you a small overview of this workflow. In the GGUF loader, I have selected the GGUF model of Ovis image. Then, in the GGUF clip loader, I have selected the QN3VL2B GGUF model. Then, in the GGUF VAE loader, I have selected the GGUF model of the VAE. Also, Ovis Image can perform simple image-to-image -image tasks. You can also get this specific workflow from my description. Now, about the generation time. 
Z-Image Turbo only takes around 30 to 40 seconds to complete a generation, meanwhile, Ovis Image takes around 3 to 4 minutes to generate an image. If we want to speed up the generation of Ovis Image, we have to lower the steps. But the problem is that lowering the steps will affect the quality of the generation. So guys, I say try this model by yourself and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. See you soon with another video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel.